All right, so the first project that we're going to do on the 68 Mustang is going to be a cooling system upgrade. Uh, so right now we have taken off the original water pump and we are going to be installing an electric pump. So with the electric pump, we have the connector that their lower radiator hose connects to. And the nice thing about this type of pump is that if you look right here, it's got a plug on one side and threads on the other. I can take this piece and put it on either side. So if my radiator lower connection is on the passenger side, I can put this connection on the passenger side or the driver's side, depending on the type of cooling system I have. In my 68, the uh, lower radiator hose is on the lower side of the radiator, the passenger side. Uh, the problem that I had with that is that on those 68 Mustangs, the out the other uh, outlet for the radiator was up here at the top um in that situation coolant just goes in it comes straight down comes out the bottom and i'm not using like 70 percent of my radiator because that flow is taking that path of least resistance to the bottom so i had a friend of mine who's a very good aluminum welder remove the outlet up here at the top and move it over to the driver's side. Since I've removed the power steering and the uh, air conditioning from this engine, there is no obstruction from routing a radiator hose from the thermostat housing to the side of the engine. You can also buy these pre already made like this. You would just want to order one for like say a 1970 Mustang instead of a 68 like mine. And it would come with the lower radiator hose on the driver's side and this one over here on the passenger side. So that is the electric uh, water pump that we're going to be installing. Um, I'm going with an electric pump because I want more flow at low speeds because that's when I tend to overheat the most. So it's going to be independent of engine idle speed now, unlike the pulley driven water pump. Uh, one of the things that does happen is that with this electric pump, I am losing this pulley right here. So that means that one, I'm also losing a spot where the alternator bracket mounts, which is why I bought this kit right here that is going to allow me to hook up my alternator with the electric water pump. That being said, since I'm also losing the pulley, that means that my belt that drove my alternator and my water pump now needs to be a lot smaller because it's going from the crank directly to the alternator. So I had to get a smaller uh, alternator belt to accommodate that. The other thing is, is that this engine is freshly rebuilt by my friend, uh, Kerry Torres. And I don't want any contaminants that might be in the block from the flush and the washing to be getting into my radiator. So I always highly recommend that we install a coolant filter whenever you have a rebuilt engine or a new radiator put in your vehicle. Now, one of the things that I've learned is that when you use an electric water pump is that a lot of people do not recommend that you keep your thermostat because you are not going to be using this bypass hose right here anymore. If you look at the old water pump, you see you have two outlets here and here. And on this one, there is no provision for that. So therefore, we bought us some plugs to plug off the lines on the engine, some of these. And we're replacing this thermostat with one of these restrictors right here. This is the first time I've done this. So everything I've read on the internet tells me that I should go with this one right here in the middle. And the way it mounts is simply in the thermostat housing. So instead of having the thermostat in the, in the housing like this, we are just simply going to, when we install the thermostat housing on the intake manifold, simply put the spacer in its place. That spacer is going to restrict flow enough that it slows it down a little bit and gives coolant time to absorb heat in the engine and remove heat from the coolant in the radiator. Uh, the One of the other projects that I'm going to be going on forward that we'll also record later on is going to be an LED upgrade to the headlight system because anyone that's driven a classic Mustang at night knows that if you don't, you can't see anything. I also have a new... Uh, oil dipstick tube and dipstick that I want to be installing because here on my old one you can see down here on the bottom that this piece right here on this one is missing down here on this one so it broke off inside of the front cover so before I install any of this stuff while I have easy access to it I'm going to try to remove this piece here 
and then be able to install this new uh, oil dipstick before I start the project that's going to cover that area up with everything else. So let's get back to it and we'll start by cleaning the engine bay in the area that we're working on and then we're going to uh, paint that area in the front to nice Ford blue and then uh, also make sure that you have enough uh, thread sealant. Uh, anytime you do a water pump front cover stuff like that thread sealant's always a good idea. Uh, then you got your backing plate. Normally this would be on the back side of your original water pump. This is just a cover because the only thing that has coolant going through it are these two ports here and here. So uh, this is basically just to cover up the big gaping hole that's going to be behind this water pump. 